What's up guys, this is Lashnox. In this video, I'm going to be summoning for brand new Lua. I'm gonna be building her as well. 15 skill ups, I'll put gear on her. I'll talk about, you know, which task you should be working toward, what this hero can be used for. And uh, yeah, let's see if I get lucky. Let us know about your luck in the comment section. Her artifact looks pretty good, man. Like you can use that on other rangers. Uh, you could put that thing on Flan, that could be pretty interesting, right? Protecting the highest attacker in the team with stealth. It's a 100% chance if you actually have this thing maxed out. So I don't know how lucky I'm actually going to be. So Lua, I think that there's a lot of ways that you can actually use this hero because there's a lot of tanky heroes, you know, in the meta and in a control environment that's Definitely a place where she's going to be able to shine. But I think in RTA, she definitely has a place there. So let's begin here by summoning for this hero. Uh, is it going to be 121 club, boys? Let's find out. Okay, so this is going to be on my second account. I do have the Coveted bookmarks. I have the Molagoras. I, I have the stuff ready. So now, the question is, how many summons will it take? Good luck to everyone. Let's begin here. And uh, yeah, the artifact. I mean, we'll see, man. I might just straight up get it using Powder of Knowledge. Thing is, it's only 75% chance if you only have one copy. So that ain't cool. It's not cool. And well, at least you get the effectiveness. You can definitely put that to good use. She will definitely require effectiveness unless you're going to be soul burning her skill 3, which ignores effect resistance. Now, the skill number 2 is pretty nice. Skill 2, uh, think you're fighting a Politis, right? Skill 3 is a non-attack skill, but what if you use skill 2, put Politis to sleep, and then you use that skill number 3, right? And after that, at the end of your turn, I believe, you're going to be dealing damage based on the target's maximum health. Uh, so, I believe the target that you press on with the skill number 3, that target will not be taking damage based on max health, but the other heroes in the team of that enemy, the other enemy heroes will be taking damage proportional uh, to their maximum health. So if you're fighting a team that has a lot of like tanky heroes, high HP, bruisers, whatever it may be, uh, that that skill 3 could definitely be good. Now my beef with it is that it removes one buff before uh, putting that uh, brand new debuff, right? Well, the problem is that one buff is sort of like not good enough anymore. Okay, so there she is. Hmm... Lua Lua. So yeah, it removes one buff. Well, what if they have a fine CC or protecting the immunity with barrier? What if they have uh well bashing a pollution? What if like any sort of like buff that's protecting immunity will mess you up? So that's that's an issue. That that's definitely an issue, and that's uh that's my beef with this hero. Of course, there's other issues like she's eyes versus of course earth. Uh, of course, missing your attack 15% innate resist. At least you have ignore effect resistance with the skill number 3. But you will need to have a mage with the Gil's Ancient book. Which is another issue, right? You, you have to have that. So if you're fighting a Bellion, that is not going to happen. So it's more reliable if you just build effectiveness on this hero. So you don't have these requirements that you need to meet to actually make the hero usable. Um, yeah, it, it's just not going to be uh, too efficient if you go about it that way so beguile is the new debuff right it says here at the end of the turn deals additional damage to all allies of the target except for the target equivalent to 10 percent of their respective maximum health beguile effect applies to heroes only and is dispelled once the effect is activated right so at the end of the turn deals additional damage like I said, to all allies of that target. Okay, so yeah. Um, this is on a 4 turn cooldown, right? What? It, she has 120 base speed or something like that? Doesn't she? Uh, so I'll, I'll check that. But she's going to be pretty good to cycle. Not the best base speed, of course. You're going to have to... Maybe you need a, a hero to actually remove immunity. Something like a hero that's actually more reliable. 
then you're gonna need two slots, you know, to to make her shine. That's that's not cool. And if you need that Gills Engine book, uh, yeah, that that's gonna be a disaster, right? So what about her artifact? I don't have too many Covenant bookmarks, so do I just like, you know, like, screw it? Like don't get it basically, because I can just have another artifact that provides effectiveness or. You know, have something of more value than this. Uh, I don't have to rely on a stealth type of artifact that is not a hundred percent chance. So to be honest, like not that big of a deal. Activate once every four turn as well. So yeah, uh, it's okay. I'll I'll pass on that. So let's just get her. Let's get her to 15 skill ups. I'll talk about the skill up priority, and then of course let's put gear on her and let's talk stats. Here we go. Here she is, thank god for the friendship points that I had saved up because I was able to make the 5 star fodders I was missing and I thought I had them or at least a potion to make her into a 6 star but everything is ready, I got the penguins, I got the catalyst, the mola, all good, let's do it up here. So Lua, we'll do her skill ups right after uh, making her into a 6 star. And uh, to be honest, this hero doesn't actually need to be 6 star max level. When it comes down to like control type of heroes, you can make it happen on a like 5 star build, uh, not even fully awakened, like whatever, like 4 star sometime, 4 star awakened. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, let's just max level her here real quick. And uh, everything's here. Okay, good. Good, good, good. And she does get 4 speed from Awakening, which means, like I said, 120 base speed. Still not the greatest, but it's something to work with, right? Like, your speed set will be put to better use. And speed set is what you want to wear on this hero, right? It, it makes complete sense to have that on her. You could go, you know, speed hit. Um, maybe you could go speed immunity. And... Uh, well, you gotta build that effectiveness. Relying on, on Tome, the Gil's Ancient Book, is... Uh, yeah, it's not gonna be smart in World Arena. Right? Um, unless you like pre-ban Billion all the time, and uh, you're gonna double up on mages while you're picking, then uh, yeah, you, you, you go for it, right? Go for it. But uh, if not, then uh, yeah, you gotta watch out. Now, uh, you could use Flan's Artifact, that will give uh, 10 souls to your team, but that's going to be after she uses the skill number 3, which is the non-attack skill. So yeah, you'll have 10 souls for someone else, but uh, you can't use that for herself. So that would be a way for you to build souls for maybe a damage dealer or something like that, whatever hero it may be. 10 souls, you know, with whatever you built up. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to reach 20 souls because Lua is probably going to go early on, right, in your rotation. So here, she's max level, Awaken, let's do the skill up here. Memory imprint for her effectiveness for herself, that's that's very good. And crit chance for up and back position. To be honest, like a lot of value out of these imprints, but the problem with crit chance for the team is that well, are you going to be building these heroes with, uh, I mean, okay, it's almost 20% crit chance. That's pretty juicy right there, right? But, like, what if she gets banned? What if it doesn't make sense to bring her in certain battles? Are those heroes going to be with, like, 80% crit chance? 85 or something like that? Yes. Actually, yes. That's not too bad. That's realistic because maybe you're going to use certain heroes on certain element uh, to be at elemental uh, advantage versus, uh, you know, element they're advantageous again. So you're getting a 50% crit chance, uh, anyways, when you uh, when you are at elemental advantage. But with that uh, imprint here, if it's like uh, double or triple S, you're gonna be able to just go against other elements, right? And uh, that that could be one way to go about it, right? So here the skill up for the skill number three, that is right there crucial. I mean, that's pretty much the purpose of this hero. The Beguile here, yes, you do get speed buff for the rest of the team, but there's plenty of other heroes that can give speed buff. CR push, uh, you know, gives a bunch of buffs. 
Uh, here you got the skill number two, which that's the thing. The cool thing here is that actually wait, no, it's not a three turn cooldown. But uh, when you use this thing, right, it, it's basically a three turn cooldown because you get an, an extra turn. This is a guarantee extra turn, which is pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, basically a three uh, turn cooldown skill too, which means that you're going to be able to on the next pass you're gonna be able to yes use it right skill two and then skill three is uh is basically minus one turn because you got an extra turn so that that's cool actually yeah on the next pass this is basically the the, the skill three is basically a three turn type of skill it, it, might, it sounds a bit weird but uh that's that's my thinking behind it it makes sense complete sense and uh that's good that's good. So yeah, what you're going to be able to do with that skill too is uh, put a pesky hero, a knowing hero to sleep, aka like a Politis. Yo, I'm going with the damage increase on this thing. Uh, is that smart? To be honest, the skill ups that should should be doing, probably not that. Like Unless you're going to go for a damage dealing uh, Lua, which doesn't make sense because skill 3 doesn't even deal damage, right? And this thing... I mean, I don't even think it has a good, good multiplier. And look at her uh, base attack. It's it's garbage, right? It's garbage. Uh, so not something that I would do. But uh, I'm actually crazy, and I like to 15 skill up the heroes. So I'll just go right ahead and do it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty sad right there. Yeah. You guys can leave me a comment and be like, oh. Those four molas. I mean, I got plenty. That's the thing. Five accounts. I'm good. That's the purpose of it. So I can do these crazy things for you guys. And you can see what kind of damage you can get. Maybe you really like to use Lua and you're like, man, that extra damage could win me games. I mean, if you're straight up using Lua in so many different games, most of your games, if she's part of your core, then by all means, like, you will eventually might end up skilling her up there. But... That's pretty insane. Yes, with Frenzy building up in RT and stuff like that, it's multi a multiplier to make her deal more damage. Enemy has less health. These things can win you a game one day, right? Like, but it's it's not something that uh, is uh, important, really. Um, okay, so the most important. Skill three, get that skill up done. And then, I mean, this, this is... Uh, last priority the skill number two the skill one you want to get effect chance on that if you're going to be relying on the defense break you can't really rely on that it's a 50 percent chance to trigger but it's something and since she has defense break on skill one i mean you could have her on counter set you're not trying to go first with her are you 120 base speed versus like 128 129 base speed hero that could be pushing a CDOM. Maybe they have a speed imprint in the team. That's not going to be happening. Lua is not going to be your turn one hero. Unless you're crazy, right? Uh, but yeah, defense break here and there on a counter set. That could be pro pretty juicy. Opening up a door to just burst down someone. Uh, yeah, that, that's sort of like a potential win condition right there. Waiting for that counter attack. Uh, so that's a possible build, right? So yeah, you max skill a three. Uh, maybe plus, wait, plus five on this, maybe early on plus three, and then bring it to plus five if you really like to use this hero Lua. And then the skill two, I mean, you could go like three points in it, uh, maybe more if the multiplier is actually solid. Because sometimes it just happens. They, some heroes have some pretty decent multipliers. And to be honest, like building her as a damage dealing hero, no AoE, uh, single target attack on S2 and S1, that's weird. Uh, that's pretty weird. Anyways. Let me uh, put some gear on her and I'll talk more about uh, what kind of build you guys can go for and uh, give you guys more thoughts about Lua. And definitely stay tuned for the next video. I'll have the showcase of her. We'll see her in action. And guys, let us know what you guys think about, you know, different builds for this hero. How was your luck summoning for Lua? And once again, like, you know, just smash the like button. It takes a second. You can subscribe if you still haven't and press, uh, you know, the bell notification don't want uh, you don't want to miss a thing okay so i'll be back in a second here
here is the build that I have for Lua. Now I'm running her on speed hit. You might be in a different boat. You might need the immunity. It depends on your roster. I'm going to be using designer a little bit, mediator Queric. So I have heroes that can deal with debuffs, right? So I'm fine. So that's why I'm going for the hit set so I can get more effectiveness because I don't want to rely on the soul burn. That's just like a headache waiting to happen uh, for me, like trying to figure out where to put the tome, uh, especially in the world arena. So I'm going for a bunch of health, defense. I mean, most importantly, you need the effectiveness. Uh, you need the speed and you also need the survivability. Like there's quite a few things that you need to uh, go for. So here you can see the gear that I have, right? Uh, so I'm trying to uh, balance uh, between the speed effectiveness, health and defense. If there's some crit chance, you know, crit damage on your gear, uh, you want to try to like reforge that away because uh i don't think this is a damage dealer at all like uh, even if she has a good multiplier on that skill number two it just doesn't make sense to be honest i'm running her on sash eye pains i think the cr pushing Tancho could help but uh yeah you probably want to run her on a different you know ranger artifact if you get the stealth for herself that could be good that means like you could have even less of ability uh, maybe more speed more effectiveness so that that could be a viable uh, setup you could run her on her own artifact you're getting some free effectiveness which is going to be uh, well easier to gear uh, her for you know i could be hitting 200 effectiveness with it so that could be pretty nice also you're helping the highest attacker in the team giving that hero stealth you know that is survivability increase um it's it's something that you cannot ignore that uh, that stealth is, is huge like it could be a combo that you're pretty much relying upon like if you have enough right if you have enough speed on her i mean you could be wearing that thing on flan uh but going like massive speed on those type of heroes not the best base speed so it's gonna be hard to justify doing something like that but uh maybe they go second maybe you just have like really speedy heroes a ton of speed across your uh your heroes anyways so that's the build i'd like to hear what you guys think but you know she's got defense break so like i said maybe counter set for her if you build enough bulk i think like if she was on a counter set i would get more health more uh, defense i wouldn't worry that much about insane speed like you could run her i don't know like 220 maybe 240 it really depends on your gear level but the effectiveness is going to be really important unless of course you have the souls you're going to be reserving souls maybe for that skill number uh, three uh, but yeah i think she's gonna perform pretty well uh we'll see in the showcase right we'll see in the showcase but if you do have recommendations, uh, hit us up in the comment section. That's going to be it for this one on Martian Ox. Good luck with all you do. Peace out for now.